recorrida de ferias de la Semana Frizz, hoy te presentamos la Feria Francesa Catlock. Vení conmigo. con Bruno Ajax, it's a pleasure to have you, he's the director of the fair. And I wanted to ask you what are the highlights of the fair this year? What do you think is the, what the visitor who comes to the fair finds interesting and unique about in a, in a frame where there are 12 fairs? So what is unique about Catlow? Uh, I think uh, what is unique is uh, 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 Catlow is offering to the public and to the, to, the, to the professional and to the public, uh, a very strong selection of uh, uh, contemporary artists and uh, also the, the selection of the artworks um, is, uh, I mean, the people that you can see here, it's not the, the, the artists that you could see, you could meet in over, over fairs. We give a, a huge attention to the um, to the, the for, to the program of the of the of the of the installations and also talks and also video art and also uh, performances. The world of our temptation is um, about your possibility and the possibility that everyone has to take the chance to really experiment something about saying no to temptation. In a world where everybody says you must yield to temptation, you must buy this, you must do that. So it's, it's really um, a way of um, having people say no and being themselves in a world where you cannot really be yourself because you always have somebody to tell you what you must do. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And also maybe it plays also with the concept of money because here the temptation is very literal. It's like oh, yes. the opportunity of, of uh, winning a lot of money. Yes, exactly. And this is why um, I chose the symbol of the um, lottery ticket because the lottery ticket, um, of course, there's nothing wrong with scratching a lottery ticket in normal life, okay? Yes. But here we are within the matrix of art. Yes. So it's an experiment. And so I wanted um, all the people to uh, take um, a lottery ticket. Yes. And then either, um, of course, you could always scratch it yes. because there is a vote. Yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there is a vote booth here um, where um, people go after I've given them the ticket. Yes. They go here, and here um, they have a space to really think. Okay, which is something we don't have much in uh, society today because um, everything goes so quickly. Exactly. So here you have a place where you can think and think about what you're doing exactly. Are you going to scratch or are you going to not scratch? Are you going to yield to temptation? Are you going to um, do something for art or for yourself? That's yes. the question. And everybody has a different answer. What can we learn today about uh, Laure de Muel? Well, what is her work about? So Laure, she's an artist living in the south of France, in, uh, next to Toulon, and she is a woman who loves women. So first, she only paints women with uh, watercolor, and then she makes them very, very sensual, huh? because she thinks women are the most beautiful uh, person on earth and she wants people to realize that. Yes. And then, a uh, few years ago, she found it to be very funny to uh, design uh, Zizi, you know, penises. <laughs> and so she started to do penises, yes. but first she painted on them uh, like a painting of uh, former masters, you know, like the Zizi of Picasso, the Zizi of Mondrian, and it was a huge success. No, this one is very important because if you look on the camera, you know it is a rainbow. Yes. And here is a Christian cross. And here is the symbol of the French Republic. 
Oh, and it means that uh, all together uh, it has been possible uh, to have uh, in a Catholic country, yes. which is a republic, uh, gay people uh, to marry as anybody else. talk about Adrienne Brome, who's a photographer, yes. and this is some of her work right here, in which she creates a very fantasy uh, story uh, using objects and uh, scenery, and uh, tells a story oftentimes of anxiety, actually, and uh, the uh, imaginative uh, side of, of a female psyche. And then Chamomile Hickson is a, an artist that I also show Manhattan. Both these women are Manhattan artists. And her medium is glitter. And she works only in glitter. And her, although she does use pop culture uh, graphics, she is all about positive energy. As you can see, I chose to interpret plants and fruit uh, in an erotic way. There's some pieces where I have a female body interacting with the plant, but you can see that some of them are also just suggestive as they are. Yeah. She really started being an activist at a very young age. Uh, pasting, with pasting her drawings onto walls, uh, mostly in, Bo in Brooklyn because she lives in Brooklyn, but around the world where she's been traveling. Now she's a leader actually in her community of uh, artists and street artists. About her work, she works really large scale. She prints very, very generically and very organically on lin lin linoleum cuts and she carves them in her in her amazing studio where everything is like all over the place but for some reason lots of people are working and it's such a good energy. Why don't you share with us a little uh, the story behind this piece that is very kind of fun and particular? <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so this piece, uh, this, this came out of a, a recent series of work that I've been working on to sort of take sound and pull it out of the auditory and pull it into the visual. So this is actually a representation of the wave file that you know you get when you record a sound. Um, this. Uh, the, this particular piece, uh, the, the sound from this piece is actually the, the tritone and closing announcement from Art Basel 2013. So it's, it's like, boom, boom, boom. Art Basel show is now closed, you know? Uh, which I, I always thought was sort of funny because it's a sort of like pan European voice and there's this sort of like a bit of urgency to it, you know, kind of like get out of the building, you know? <laughs> My sculptural work is kind of a soup of sorts. I started out as a graffiti artist, which is a path that would not necessarily lead you to making metal sculpture or 3D printed sculpture. I became very interested in metal craft, sculpture, design, and architecture. And I believe that my explorations in form embody all of those disciplines. It was a kind of a very interesting um, trajectory. I, I am self-taught, so I had to go and try to learn about all these things either from books or other people. And I've just continued to develop that language in different scales over, you know, the last couple decades. I will present to you uh, Pessy Girsch. She's a German-born, lives uh, in Israel for many years. Um, actually, she, she deals a lot with mortality, with life and death. Um, and this area shows these animals and the way she creates kind of uh, minimalistic uh, compositions of the animals. Uh, it it's deals a lot with uh, being a second generation of the Holocaust and, and, and so on. Uh, deals a lot, a lot, a lot with uh, genocide and so on. Terminamos 
nuestro episodio de hoy. Nos volvemos a ver el próximo jueves y no olvides suscribirte a Cosmo Arte TV. Chao, chao.